Hi, I'm Jeff Rogers with Innovative IDM. One of the biggest challenges facing today's automation specialists is the way to make multiple field buses communicate with upstream and downstream equipment. It's, it's a very daunting task um, that can take a lot of programming knowledge that uh, it could probably be covered in several college courses even. Uh, but today we're going to kind of keep it pretty high level and talk about a few different components that can be used should you, have, should you find yourself having to do this. Now, first thing is obviously all kinds of field buses exist out there. Some are proprietary, some are open source, meaning that anybody can use that type of uh, protocol um, whenever designing a piece of equipment. So obviously the ones that are proprietary are going to be harder to uh, make communicate with other pieces of equipment because the gateway type equipment that can be used are somewhat limited. There's just not that many of them out there. Other field buses, uh, for instance, probably one of the most well-known is Ethernet, um, be it Ethernet IP, Ethernet TCP IP, um, is, is a very widely used standard that uh, I see getting more and more popular every day. It seems to be becoming almost the standard um, if, if people have a choice. Um, so remember, proprietary is going to be a bigger challenge, uh, but there are ways to get around that. Um, what you got to consider is not only the protocol that you need to make, make communicate with other protocols, but also the transmission media. So you can actually transmit, you know, Profibus protocol over an Ethernet cord, over a Cat5 cord with RJ45 connectors on it. Um, so that there's, you just got to remember, not only is it, if it, just because the cord looks the same doesn't mean that the protocol is going to be the same. Um, so remember those things. Uh, you know, ideally, I always tell people if it's a new piece of equipment and you want to make sure that it's going to communicate with, with all your other equipment, you really need to get with that, uh, that OEM and, and almost demand um, that they use a network that you're familiar with so that you, know, you don't have to go through the hassle because, it, it's, it, again, it's not fun. It, uh, it, it's kind of a pain. Um, it's pretty cumbersome. You know, um, ideally, you, sh you should try to standardize on um, a type of protocol that you're familiar with that's you know, very flexible, gives you a lot of different options, and that a lot of manufacturers out there support, again, such as Ethernet. Um, I would say that's probably one of the most common um, in, in today's market. Now, again, if you do find yourself, for instance, if you have older equipment in your plant that already has a different protocol on it and you want it to be able to communicate with, uh, say, your SCADA setup or just for you know, some sort of monitoring device or an add-on or anything like that to the machine and those two different protocols just need to be able to talk to each other, then again, you can set up what's called a gateway. And so there are different devices that can be used as a gateway, which is basically just allowing two different protocols to communicate with each other. Um, there are three um, that, that are uh, come to mind most common. Um, first of all, there are manufacturers out there that uh, make simple, just discrete adapter components where you just plug in with one end, plug in with the other end, and it has an internal circuit board that makes that uh, communication possible. Um, so those exist, but they're a little bit limited and sometimes they get pretty pricey. A lot of, a lot of uh, people out there that manufacture those are sure are pretty proud of them. If you have a lot of components where you need to be able to make uh, a whole bunch of different ones talk to each other, that, that can get sort of pricey. Another one um, that you may consider um, that we often find ourselves using is um, either a PLC or an I.O. system that can actually be programmed for making different uh, you know, types of communications protocols talk to each other. Um, for instance, WAGO has an I.O. system uh, that is uh, known as field bus independent. So they actually have uh, field bus couplers that support all of the open protocols that exist um, in today's market. So for instance, this one right here supports Ethernet. And if I wanted to make Ethernet talk to uh, Modbus, for instance, then I could drop a Modbus card in right here, so a Modbus serial card, and actually have those two uh, you know, components basically talk to each other. So for instance, if I had a touchscreen that only communicated via Modbus and I wanted to make it talk to a piece of equipment, say a, a variable frequency drive that communicates over Ethernet, I could use this component as the go-between. Oftentimes, uh, people also use uh, touchscreen HMIs themselves as the gateway. Um, this particular touchscreen has both uh, Modbus capabilities as well as Ethernet built into it. 
So you can use one, you know, you can plug one piece of equipment into one port, uh, plug the other piece of equipment into the other port that may be a different protocol, and still be able to make these, uh, and make, make those two pieces of equipment be able to communicate via um, this, this device, essentially turning it into a gateway. So it can get pretty uh, complicated. There's a, there's a lot of ins and outs um, as, as far as uh, really needing to know how to be able to program those things, addressing registers properly within a program to be able to make all those talk. Um, that's something that we uh, have a lot of experience with because again, it, it does come up. Um, but just remember that networking is extremely important. It's only gonna become more and more important as time goes on because uh, you know, um, the top brass at all the plants you know, and, and manufacturing companies around the world are always going to want uh, better access to information, um, efficiency data, uh, also um, remote control and data acquisition capabilities and all of that has to be done through networking all of these pieces of equipment together. So if you need any help with that, please contact us. We have uh, programming specialists, application specialists that can come out on site and help you with that. Um, you can also find information located on our website and our Knowledge Center. Just go to InnovativeIDM.com. You'll find our Knowledge Center there that has white papers for the specific products that we support on how to set those types of things up. After all, we are the home of the legendary customer experience.